I'm calling the meeting to order. This is the Triton Regional School Committee meeting of December 5th, 2018 in the Triton High School Library at 7 p.m. Um, this meeting is being audio and video recorded. If you could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So welcome everyone. I am so excited to honor you all tonight. Um, Sean, to start this off, I believe we're honoring cross country first. First, we'd like to thank you and the rest of the committee to having the athletic program here, which is led by our girls cross country team that had an outstanding season for the 2018 season. And I would also like to recognize our girls basketball team for taking a break to come and support some of their other students, both from athletics and from the performing arts. So I do appreciate Coach Boyle and his team coming down. I'd like to just read you a short statement. The 2018 Triton Girls Cross Country Team finished the Cape Ann League season with a perfect record of 10 and 0. While it was their second Cal Championship in the past four seasons, it was the first time since 1986 that any Triton Cross Country Team finished a season undefeated. This undefeated season included a victory over Hamilton Wenham, who had not lost a league meet in over 14 years. Now, just by chance, back in 2004 when they lost, that was also to Triton. <laughs> the girls then went on to finish runners-up in Division 5 for the MIA and finish fourth overall in the All-State Championship meet, which takes the top teams from all divisions and puts them head-to-head -head against each other. This is the highest placing state team for the cross-country team in school history. The student-athletes also had three KPN League All-League all runners, Ellie Gay Colleen, Sarah Harrington, and Kerry Power as well as two MIA Division V medalists, Ellie Gay Colleen and Sarah Harrington, and one All-State medalist, Ellie Gay Colleen. All of them was also, this was the most postseason recognition for any cross-country team in school history. The other remarkable thing is, there were no seniors on the varsity team that competed in the championship season, meaning that with all our hopes, this whole team will be back for 2019 and beyond. So I thought we could give them a round of applause before we introduce them. At this point, we would like to recognize the team with the certificate of achievement that was issued by the chairperson of the school committee, Narissa Wallen, Wallen and Superintendent Brian Forzette. If you guys could please come over here as we introduce the team. The first two student athletes that were part of the team that could not be here were their two managers, Morgan Monroe and Kelly Firthson. The student athletes that are here, first, Heidi Ernst. Right over against the books there. Ellie Gay Colleen. Sarah Harrington, <laughs> Kylie Lorenzo, <laughs> Carrie Power, <laughs> Samantha Protopapas. Isabella Silva. <laughs> Ivy Sims. <laughs> Lainey Toll. <laughs> Ella Visconti. <laughs> Sage Woodward. And our two coaches, first the assistant coach, Coach Laurie Toll. <laughs> and 
and we're going to identify Coach Colbert as he comes up as a two-time winner, one, having get to lead this great group of student athletes, but also he was voted as the 2018 Cape Ann Lee Girls Cross Country Coach of the Year. Somebody else down there with Ivy? Anybody? Or if we can squeeze in, maybe. <laughs> Mr. Ford, yeah, if you could go next there. One, two, three. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. At this time, I would like to introduce from the Visual and Performing Arts, the Assistant Band Director, Cam Kane. All right, hi everyone, I'm Cameron Kane. I'm the Assistant Band Director for the Triton Marching Band. On behalf of Susan Densmore, uh, she was unfortunately not able to make it tonight from a prior obligation. Um, I just want to say thank you to the school committee and as well as the administration for recognizing us. We are uh, beyond thrilled to get a silver medal uh, for our Sound of Simon show this fall at the MICA competition. Um, so some of, our, some of our students weren't able to make it as well, uh, but I'd like to uh, go through the list and recognize the ones that are here as well. All right, so. First off, we have John Anastasio. We have Kat Avery. Sergey Avery. We have Zach Banesh. Amanda Bowman. We have Maddie Butler. We have Stone Butler. <laughs> Evelyn Buxton. <laughs> Jack Carroll. <laughs> Haley Clogston. <laughs> Marina Cravello. <laughs> Abby Densmore. Drum Major, Evelyn Densmore. <laughs> Lucian Densmore. <laughs> Brianna Dow. <laughs> Cole Earhard. <laughs> Renee Esper. <laughs> Walter Hardy. Maya Hayes. <laughs> Marcella Hubbard Brucher. <laughs> Emily Jacobs. <laughs> Drum Major Caroline Jacobs. <laughs> Mackenzie Kimball. <laughs> Emma Leahy. Lily Latarski, Eddie Lynch, Morgan Marmalati, AJ Marianello, Sammy Mar Marianello, Cheyenne Knock. Lily, uh, sorry, Lizzie Oliver. <laughs> Color Guard Captain, Maggie Oliver. <laughs> Olivia Rowe. <laughs> Lily Sh uh, Charay. 
Color Guard Captain Kendall Sicard. <laughs> Braden Toth. <laughs> Maeve White. <laughs> All right, Band Director Susan Densmore. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Assistant Band Director Cameron Kane. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a uh, percussion instructor, Sam Densmore. <laughs> percussion instructor, Matt Denaro. <laughs> we have drill instructor, Neil Butler. <laughs> Guard instructor, Liz Butler. And uh, we are missing one, but also late to our team was Jasmine Hardy. Thank you. chance to clear real quick. <laughs> Very few to take a couple Warmed up. And then, and then there was Bernie. No one else. I'll be here, Jeff. I know, <laughs> clearly. All right, um, moving on to item four, chairperson's remarks. Um, I have a few more, um, a few more acknowledgements to do. Uh, Triton Voice was in the best of school, school news online again, republished stories from Jacqueline Downs, The Christmas Carols, and Curtain Call. Uh, the, I know Olivia's gonna talk about this later, but uh, the performing arts organization staged Our Town, which I know you're gonna speak about, so. Um, acknowledging that Feral Insurance and Finance Services represented Miss Mary Jo Lagana of Newbury Elementary, the Horace Mann Hugs and Kisses Award, uh, which recognizes educators for a fantastic effort th over the past few weeks. The middle school students of the month were Brady, Natalie, Brenda, and Aiden. Madison Butler auditioned for and was one of 12 flautists selected for the Mass Music Educators Association Northeastern District Honor Band. She will perform at the concert on January 12th at Galvin Middle School in Wakefield. Seniors Nate Picard and Zach Banesh won first place in the WPI Robotics Tournament. This is Nate's second year winning first place at the competition. Uh, and it is the season of giving. The middle school held a can drive for Pettengill House. The Leaders Club served dinner at the Lawrence Boys and Girls Club. The Sea Fest of Trees was a wash with students, I would say, from Triton, uh, both volunteering and uh, creating trees for the, for the show. Um, the football team assembled bikes. We've had bell ringers for the Salvation Army. Andrea Campbell and the middle school students prepared 120 pies for the Rowley Newbury and Salisbury Council on Aging for the Pies on Wheels program, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, a couple of quick reminders. Um, I know a couple of you are waiting on or, or had submitted updated bios or new bios. Those have been posted. If you could just double check and make sure they look okay. The photos, I know some people had requested updated photos. As of this morning, I don't believe they've been okay. done yet. So I know that's, that was still in process. They had to be pulled. Get back to me. 
back with Keith to get the old ones. Yes, okay. Um, and I just wanted to acknowledge, um, last Friday we had a small prior on the Pine Grove School roof, as many of you probably heard or saw in your email. And I just wanted to acknowledge um, the police, the fire, and the staff. It was a quick response. It was out very quickly. I think the students felt safe the whole time. Um, I, I mean, it was just, if, if you're going to have a bad situation, I think it went as well as it possibly could have. And it was at a tough time of the day, too, because it was as students were coming into the school. Did you have? If I could just add to that, that, yes, it was. Um, it was a phenomenal response, and it was. I think the staff, especially, were ready. It was as just as buses were about to arrive, which I guess we could say it would have been a little worse twenty minutes later if buses had arrived and we were reloading buses. Um, but it was uh, as actually Narissa was there as everyone was coming back into the school at nine forty-five ish. Um, you, kids, you'd never known something happened by looking and talking to the kids as Christine and Nicole walked around the building. There was very little awareness in general. There were discussions, but um, certainly uh, on social media, it, it took on a life of its own. Mm -hmm. um, the fire was because of a spark through welding, and it was foam in, temporary foam insulation that caught. So it's more of a smoldering, which produces lots of smoke. So. Obviously, when you have billowing smoke coming from an elementary school, it causes alarm. So I think it was a great response. And uh, as a result, we've taken some steps internally to be better prepared to, regardless of where we are, whether sitting in my truck out front trying to record a message or in an office or wherever we are, to be able to get out timely information to parents. To Everyone was safe. It, it worked perfectly. Um, but I think we could have put out some, uh, some or dispelled some myths that quickly started floating around town. So. Yeah, and on social media, not town. I have to say, due to the fact that there was welding on the roof, there was actually a fire watch that was up there, and that firefighter was on top of yes. it. I mean, very quickly up there with fire extinguishers and making sure that the alarm got pulled and the building got evacuated, and he was, there was no question yeah. that he was in charge, and that was, you know, what was, what was going on. And it, I mean, just to note, I mean, in the debrief afterwards with the individuals who were there doing the welding at the time, you know, the statement from W.T. Rich was, it should not have happened. It absolutely should not have happened. Um, they're aware. I feel very confident now that uh, everyone will be even more cautious than they were being prior. So um, it was, for all intent and purposes, as uh, Narissa said, it was, it was a good learning lesson and at a time when it, it actually worked out okay. So, yeah. Um, that's the end of my remarks. Uh, oral communications from the public. <laughs> I'll take that as a no. <laughs> Uh, moving on to item six, the consent agenda. I'll read aloud the donations. We have a check in the amount of $250 from Christy Yablin to be used to purchase books for Newbury Elementary School grade two students. A check in the amount of $600 from Community Service of Newburyport Incorporated to be used for student needs in the Newbury Elementary School Student Health Office. And a check in the amount of $1,000 from the Newbury Elementary School PTA to be used for the holiday gift workshop. Can I have a motion to accept the consent agenda, please? Moved. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right, excellent. Uh, moving on to the student advisory report, please, Olivia. This year's homecoming competition took place from Tuesday, November 13th to Wednesday, November 21st. Classes attended several events for which participation counted towards winning homecoming. The hypnotist performance, powder puff football against Pentucket, the volleyball competition, and the homecoming dance all saw a good turnout from Triton students. Student Council's goal for homecoming was to establish class leadership and teamwork, as well as encourage school pride among students. Overall, these goals were met. Although the Penny Wars Committee did see an increase in participation this year, raising around $200 to be split between Student Council and the winning class of 2021, the Can Drive Committee did not see as much participation. To the disappointment of Student Council, the Can Drive collected a small total amount of canned goods from all classes. Improvements suggested for next year include increased amounts and po in excuse me increased announcements and posters advertising the can drive and other events. From getting their skits disqualified in years past to not cleaning up bleacher decorations, this year's senior class has had their problems. But this year, the seniors worked together, participated in dress-up days, and followed the stage directions for the skit. Despite amazing decorations and funny skits from other classes, the seniors won homecoming. Hopefully this display of leadership and teamwork will continue throughout the year and be reflected in upcoming assemblies and of course graduation. 
Student Council Advisor, Ms. Bolio, held a meeting with Student Council's elected board, class officers from all classes, and anyone else who wished to attend to discuss how to improve homecoming in the future. There was an overall push to reform the dress-up days and the gym sports competitions in hopes to increase participation from students in all classes. The general consensus was that camo day and crab soccer should be removed from homecoming. <laughs> the Senior Citizens Tea is scheduled to be held on Thursday, December 13th. Members of Triton Singers will perform songs that they've been working on since the beginning of the school year. Student Council plans to continue their established tradition of Secret Santa for the staff members at Triton. The main office, janitorial, cafeteria, and teaching staff will be assigned to student-led committees who will work to improve the days of teachers with baked goods or school supplies leading up to the week of winter break. In November, a meeting was held between Ms. Daw and students to discuss the admission of dress code breaking senior pictures in the yearbook. This was in reference to the shoulder exposing tops worn by senior girls. As a result of this meeting, Ms. Daw and yearbook advisor Ms. Fine met with two student yearbook representatives, and after much discussion and consideration of all voices heard, it has been decided that all senior portraits will be admitted as they were sent in. Um, Triton High School's fall play, Our Town, by Thornton Wilder, was performed during, during the first week of December. Based in New Hampshire in 1901, director Mr. Reardon described the performance as a great success with a good audience turnout and emotional performances from actors. Recommended by teachers and advisors, 10 junior and senior girls were selected to attend the women's conference in Boston tomorrow, Thursday, December 6th. Chaperoned by Ms. Daw and Ms. Ober, the group will attend seminars about leadership with guest speakers including Amal Clooney and Elizabeth Gilbert. Thank you, and please ask any questions. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. I'm opening up to questions from the committee. Excellent. I just wanted to, to thank you for your follow through on this. Obviously, you're carrying issues from month to month now, which is great. It's nice to see the follow up on that. Um, and I appreciate the, the length of your um, your uh, speech. I don't, know, I don't know what to call it. Report. Comments. There we go. Comments. <laughs> Um, since it gives us a, a good overview or a good um, insight into student life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, new business. Any new business? Okay. Oh, sorry. This isn't new business, but um, Olivia mentioned the senior tea. Yes. But the winter concert is the 20th, is it? Yeah, it's the 21st. I 21st. Okay. Just wanted to mention that. Can I just add? Um, speaking of concert, I don't know where we were putting this in the agenda, but before the meeting tonight, I went over to Salisbury and saw their winter concert. And it's just, it, it reminds you of why we all sit around this table and do what we do. It's just so exciting, and hopefully we'll see some of those little kiddos here in <laughs> six to eight, ten years getting their, re their uh, acknowledgement here, too. Yes, and I was at Newbury's last night, Salisbury's tonight, and Pine Grove's tomorrow night, and Todd Roberts, the middle school uh, instrumental instructor was there doing a little uh, what do you call that? <laughs> scouting. So he's definitely in the back checking things out and absolutely got to build the programs. Yep. Excellent. Um, oh, 2018. Uh, sorry, we're in reports and deliberations, item nine. Uh, under A, the 2018 2019 school committee meetings adjustments. Do you, uh, do you want to handle that or do you want me to? Yeah, but can I say one thing? Oh, um, the holiday concert for the high school is the 20th. So just to clarify to make sure. So it's the middle school is the 18th and the high school is the 20th. So just to make sure people didn't look elsewhere. Um, so what item? The meeting adjustment. So when we created the calendar this year, we created the, the first, the, the January meeting as January 2nd. And as I was talking to Narissa, Neither of us could figure out why we landed there because I, I don't know that how many people, uh, how many of us will have our brains re-engaged on the second day of the year. So my suggestion to Narissa and to bring tonight was to bump that out a week so that the regular meeting would be Wednesday the 9th when we're fully, fully exercised in the year 2019. Um, so that's the suggestion. That is the second Wednesday. Yes. Do we have anybody that has an objection to that date? Because we do need to make a quorum. That's the, the one issue I was hoping we would not have. Yeah, I couldn't remember if, if there was a reason why. I felt like there must have been a reason why we would stick it on the first Wednesday. But maybe it was just senility. I don't know. Ready? It happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And this second thing was? So is that a yes? We're definitely yes, we're good I that? Believe, yeah. So the second was it, it, it kind of blends into um, item B. Um, with the fiscal 20 budget. So we, uh, we've already agreed that we are going to present 
uh, school improvement plans in June. Um, we're, we're separating those uh, the, by concept. I like the idea of, of school improvement plans and budgets tied at the exact same time. Um, but we agreed the better timing for school improvement planning is along with um, goal setting by the committee and plan district-wide planning. So we agreed school improvement plans are gonna be presented in June um, and then would be started again on the new cycle in September. Um, as part of that, we need less time to make budget presentations because the, the length, the bulk of those meetings, originally when we first started this structure, I believe it was four nights, if I'm not mistaken. It was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night. Um, I think early on there was lots of information to share. Now it's been a lot of repeating the same things over and over again and, and unfortunately going backwards. Um, so that shrunk to three nights and now I'm gonna suggest at a minimum it, it shrinks to two nights. Um, uh, there's, I have additional thoughts about budget presentations by the principals, but I think um, even if individual presentations are made by the principals, um, we don't need more than two nights. So one night could be the building principals um, and the second night would be all well, district um, presentations. Um, so coupled with that, go right into the, the fiscal 20 piece. Cool. Uh, do you want to ask a question? Yeah, I do actually. Um, so we are not hearing from the principals of, at all. Is that correct during the? So that's, so that's the, the second piece. So there's been lots of discussion, right? Throughout this process, we talked at the, um, the workshop back in September um, about changing the process. Um, and then we've talked about how we're gonna proceed with the development of the budget this year. Um, I, I will speak on behalf of the leadership team that given the year that we went through last year, um, it took a toll on people. Um, it took a toll all the way down to the classrooms. Um, and I don't necessarily, I don't want to say it's not because of the dollars, but it's about the process. It was about the fact that a process we started in, you know, discussions in November, December, um, they weren't done until June. Uh, and that left a really bad taste in everyone's mouth. So I can tell you that as a leadership team, four of us and the five principals, um, we have found, and I think the, the principals and, and folks in schools have found a rhythm this year. There were cuts, there were things that we don't have anymore that we had. Um, you know, we, we can go through the list over the decade of what's gone away from technology specialists to math specialists to lots of things that we had, late buses, things that we had that we don't have anymore. Um, but we've figured it out. Um, we're not where we want to be, uh, but I think the needs are well documented. Um, and with that, I feel like it's, it's where our mindset has landed is we need to just say, okay, the message needs to be, we need to maintain what we have. Um, that's, and I can tell you that our co goal coming into this budget cycle with a, uh, I didn't bring the figure, but the, you know, with, a, with an initial figure to just roll, um, you know, call it level services into next year, we're, you know, over $1.8 million. Um, none of that is, well, there's some that's negotiable, obviously. There's healthcare assumptions there. Um, but besides the healthcare, um, those are all costs that are, are, for one reason or another, quite out of our control. So if that's the case, and we're gonna land at um, cutting, um, I'm hoping we don't land there and we can work with these numbers, but I certainly don't think we're gonna be in a place where we're adding. Um, so I think the process of going through that I say so the the act of going through that process with the principals is it's hard for them to go through the process. So um, I've been thinking about this. You know, the leadership team has met and had lots of discussions with the, about this over the the uh, months. Um, and I would I would rather than the um, the principals. They're completing the budget booklets, okay? So the, the, the process that we've completed, um, you know, in talking to Narissa, there's some helpful information in there, um, whether it be the class sizes and the staffing lists, um, the capital needs. I think that's important to keep putting capital needs out in front of everyone. Um, but the, the staffing requests um, and the new budget line requests, you know, the, the kind of the general consensus of the group, not the four of us pushing, but the principal saying, if we can just keep the, the supply lines, the materials lines, the um, textbook lines um, intact, and we can just not take away any staffing, would be ecstatic. So with that, my thinking was, um, 
still, still have a night where we're talking about budgets, obviously, and the principles are there. Um, but for that presentation, and I think if this were the case, this would be why I said earlier, at a minimum, at a maximum two nights, maybe even one night, um, have them at the table for these discussions. So close the loop here, make it a square, and make it more of a workshop format where that's the four of us, so it's the full leadership team. So it's, it's nine, nine, not nine versus nine, that sounds wrong, but it's nine <laughs> um, district administrators and it's nine school committee members, and we sit around the table and have the discussion. Um, but they wouldn't be presenting anything. And then I would like the, the presentation to focus on, um, it, we've been having some discussion about technology and we keep saying we need this. We, you, know, this um, you had asked the question last month about um, our security mm -hmm. and are we, are we cyber secure? Um, we haven't done a lot of, of, we've provided a lot of information during budget time about here's what we need to, to maintain, but we haven't really had a discussion about how do we use technology? great we're secure but so to, to have the budget presentation be a little larger and if there's going to be a request have it be you know what we need eight Chromebook carts so that we are MCAS it's not MCAS 2.0 it's next gen MCAS ready for 19 um, you know so it have it be that presentation and that involves the principals and is directly correlated to the work in their buildings or if we want to talk about late buses that impacts all the principles if so so any of those uh, items that we want to talk about it becomes more of a district discussion and a district presentation than an individual principals presentation well i'm glad to hear the principals will be present because when i first read in your superintendent's report um, and looking at this i got the impression that they were not going to be present um, which I think is a missed opportunity for them to advocate for their schools, which I understand the thought process that you've described, but um, our job and your job and the principal's job is to advocate for the needs of the students. And I don't want to miss an opportunity to do that, whether it be ugly or not. Absolutely. And I, it will be, I get it, yeah. but. Yeah. yeah, and I think there's, it's, it's, so then again, I, I go to, um, yes, it's my job to make sure that we're providing what's necessary for academic progress, uh, you know, ac academics, you know, academics, intellectual, you name it. Um, but by the same token, I have to look at the 425 people who walk in here every day um, and make sure that I'm responding to their needs and I'm seeing a wounded bunch. Um, so so how, do we, how do we balance that? Um, you know, it's. No, I, like I said, yeah, Brian, no, I, I, yeah. I, I am happy to hear that the principals be will be yep. present because yep. I, for whatever reason, got the impression that they weren't going to be, that it would be more. I'll have to go back and read what I wrote. I think they're, if I can just clarify, I think it's that they're not actively presenting. I, I think it's going to be more of discussion. Yeah. So in my conversations with Brian, what I said kind of on the behalf, hopefully, of the committee was that part of those those books, part of the materials that we receive in January is one of our looks into what's actually going on in each individual school without actually being there. And I think we need to continue to have that ability to look in and have all that material in front of us. Um, if it's a choice not to actively present that material and it's more of really a discussion, then, then I, do, I don't think that that's as long as you're part of the discussion yeah and it, mm -hmm. and it may be part of that presentation is you know you have you know your class sizes and for each of the schools let's talk about that but it doesn't have to be just a you know discussion with mm -hmm. principal yando and then principal neil it can just be mm -hmm. organic discussion um so and i yeah i just think through this process um th there needs to be um an acknowledgement of of what happened last year um and this was not um, this was not just, I don't want to say the towns, right? It's not just elected officials saying <laughs> we can't afford the budget. Um, we, we did what we've been saying for years. We said, let the voters decide. And the voters spoke very clearly. Um, and so there are, there are many, many parents who are very supportive of the schools, but couldn't support an override because they can't afford it. So I feel like if we're not in, in even if it's just this year, taking a year to say, we heard that, we're gonna respond. And then going back to the discussions we have as a leadership team with the nine principals, it's, can we please just, can we please just tread water? Because we figured out a way to do it and we just wanna stay there. 
So, but I agree 100 percent that they have to be part of the discussion. Jim, yeah. I just um, yeah. I think it's really important based on what you said that you had bruises last year that as a superintendent that you chair and run the meeting and speak for the principals, letting them have input. But I think that um, it's, it, you know, it's your role to guide them as you indicated, um, and not being disrespectful to the principal's input, but you know, um, that they don't really need to be on the firing line. So I, I think if what I'm hearing you really say is that you're gonna anchor the burden and, um, and chart the course for them with them being available to answer questions to support what you have to say. So I would say yes, if it became a, a firing line, <laughs> a firing squad, yes. I don't anticipate it being that. I, I've never had that experience as a principal myself. You indicated and they're bruises. I think they're, the, the bruises are not because of these folks, because of the committee. It's because no, of... I understand that. It was the process. No, I understand that. Yeah, so absolutely. But yeah, no, I think it's a, they're an important part of the discussion. They're, um, they've got a lot to add. Um, they're oftentimes, as you know, a question's asked, and I won't have the answers, and so it's good for them to be part of those discussions. Absolutely, Jim. Yeah. Any other comments on that? So what we were debating doing is dropping the Tuesday, I think was what we finally came on. Was so I think we were saying it was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. So we were saying definitively at least dropping one night. So if, if we're... If we're really talking about this being budget presentations that are going to focus on really kind of the, the business and operations of the district, the curriculum, the instruction, and the special education programs with the principals as part of that discussion, then I think that's one night. No. <laughs> I'm going to say I disagree because okay. I, I mean, we've talked about that before. And my feeling is if you're going to have nine presentations, that's a lot to do in a few hours and stay fresh through them all. But it's not, I'm saying it's three presentations. So if, if the, it's we're saying oh, really one. focusing on kind of the, the three domains represented to mm -hmm. my right yep. with the principals as part of that discussion. I mean, if we think one of those is a really large discussion and we tease that out, um, or we could schedule them both, see how the night goes. I mean, I, I, we don't have to take them off the calendar. Um, my preference would be to keep them. I want to make sure we cover all the material and I want to make sure we have time for discussion, but I'll open it to the committee just, you know. Keep the two. Mm -hmm. At least. So, so when would we be doing technology and athletics and all that? I mean, you're saying do all of that on one night, including the... Yes. So we would do technology as part of that district-wide presentation. Yeah. And we can split it if we wanted to do... I would... I vote for two nights. I think it's too much to do in one night. Any other why, why not let the um, superintendent do what he suggested? Schedule for one night. What you don't finish, you have another night to back it up rather than starting off saying two nights. I don't care if it's three nights. It doesn't bother me. Hmm. I'm just saying, you know, I mean, I, again, I go back to the notion that the superintendent has to chart the course. And um, I think if you, and I understand everybody's position that they're elected officials, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I think if, if you chart the course, and these are the three areas or four areas that, that the, you know, 95% of the funding goes to, and we don't, all the questions aren't responded to appropriately on one night, then follow it up with the second night. So I understand that, but the school committee is responsible for the budget, and yeah. we need to have the information that we're comfortable with. I so that. I understand where the superintendent is coming from. We've had these discussions, but I, I don't know. Don't I understand quite well how school committees work. I'm just saying that you elect the superintendent to make some decisions, and I think the suggestion he made is a good decision, and I, 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 that's my opinion. And, and we don't have okay. to determine tonight which goes which night. I mean, I think as we're getting budget presentation or budget um, packets in, mm -hmm. we can determine and say, you know what? Technology is going to be an hour and a half discussion. <laughs> we're given a separate night for technology. And I think we could do it that way. So we'll, I think I'm hearing definitely two nights. Keep mm -hmm. the Tuesday, Wednesday. We can always repost at, on Tuesday. If we decide it's getting long, we could, we could post for Thursday. I don't think we need three nights, but I can absolutely see the need for two nights. So to keep the two nights and then the change. I, well, I just want to reiterate that this is, this is not just the superintendent. This is the school committee's decision to make ultimately. And that's, that's a critical distinction that we need to, to maintain. And the other thing is just from a practical standpoint, I would rather schedule two nights and say, okay, we don't need to come back tomorrow than I would to come 
and say, oh, by the way, we need to come back tomorrow. We can't do that. We need to post ahead of time. So the extra meetings would have to be posted ahead of time. Who do you want to? I'm hearing two, Tuesday, Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursday. Leach gives you Thursday in case we decided we need it. All right, so regular monthly, second to ninth, yes. So the regular monthly meeting is the 9th of January. Budget meetings will be the 15th, 16th, the Tuesday, Wednesday. <coughs> Done. <laughs> All right, moving on to the fiscal year 2020 operating budget development. Um, Michelle, did you have any update before I briefly talk about the letter from the town of Raleigh? Okay. Um, in your packet, you have a letter from the, uh, the town of Rowley uh, Board of Selectmen. Um, as for, for background for everyone, um, we typically want one of these every year. Um, it's usually earlier in the year um, than this is, so they've actually, they're a little bit later than they usually are. Um, it, they, they go through their, their finances and what they expect their revenues to be and uh, provide some guidance. So this is the letter that's here. Um, my stance is that this is a discussion both for the school committee and for the district communications committee because anything that um, that affects Rowley is also going to affect um, Newbury and Salisbury as well and it needs to be a discussion amongst <coughs> all of the towns and the school committee. Um, but if there are comments tonight, I'm happy to hear them. Um, I personally think this is a kinder tone than we've seen in the past. So. Um, you know, I, I'm always looking for a little progress here and there wherever we can get it. And I, I feel like it's, you know, it's not warm and fuzzy, but it's, it's um, sunnier than it's been in the past, <laughs> if I can say yeah, I that. I would just echo the same thing and say that I, it's, I think at this point we want baby steps. Yep. And I feel like there's, there's, there's um, a window here. And I want to acknowledge that um, mm -hmm. Cliff Pierce as the chair um, had the discussion with the selectmen and then uh, made sure he connected with the town and manager to make sure, or town administrator, to make sure that the, the, um, the letter reflected the discussion. And again, it's not, hey, we have all the money in the world for you, um, but if you look at last year's and this year's, there's a different tone, and I will take a change in tone at this point. Any comments on this? No? All right. Moving along, um, school committee goal follow-up. So as you know, we put a new um, agenda item on every month uh, for anyone who has attended um, events in the last, uh, since, la since the last school committee meeting and uh, to provide the ability to update on that. I unfortunately forgot to look at the grid before I left tonight, <laughs> which was one of my goals was, um, and I totally forgot. Um, so did anybody attend any meetings since the November 14th meeting it would be that they would like to update us on? I've, we've, we've heard about events, I, yeah. I, can, I forgot this was later in the- Yes, no, all good. This is a terrific place to be able to voice something like that and I know Deb attended as well. Um, I attended the Monday's Board of Selectmen meeting and I'll just update on that later on because it's a DCC relevant um, issue on that that I was there for specifically. Anybody? No. Okay, moving on. Uh, 9D, the MSC Regional Schools Caucus report. No report. We haven't met. We will have a um, conference call with Jay Sullivan in January, so there won't be anything happening until then. Mm. <laughs> 9E, the monthly report of the superintendent of schools, please. Wait. Oh, wait, did I miss something? Sorry. On C, you had school committee goal number two. Was that going to be where I presented this or in my policy? I thought you were going to do it in policy. Okay, but no, that's fine. I just saw it on that section. Whatever you prefer. No, it doesn't matter okay. to me. So okay. Okay. All right. So I, I will, this is a long report, um, so I'll try to keep this brief. Um, the first uh, item is in regards to state accountability reporting, and this is um, school by school spending data. This is a new requirement of ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act. Um, it said simply, this is gonna be really interesting to see how this data looks. Um, for the first time, uh, ESSA requires that um, the Department of Ed produces school by school per pupil expenditures. Um, so if you take things as simple as Title I being applied at Salisbury, but it's not at Newbury, 
there's going to be a discrepancy there. Um, or you take a look at, we got a grant, Title II was paying for one teacher, so we, or half of a teacher, so we just randomly chose a second grade teacher at Newbury, then that spending is going to look different there. So it's, it's they're, they're trying to uh, mitigate the impact, um, but the reality is, is, is going to be very interesting. Compounding that is the fact that it's only school by school expenditure. So if someone were to take $41 million total spending, you have to net off um, all out of district placements for special education. You have, to, you have to net off charter school tuitions. You have to net, net off uh, school choice. You have to net off transportation because those aren't school by school costs. So I get where the spirit of ESSA was when they put this information out there. Um, but if you talk to anyone, including Jay Sullivan, um, at the Department of Ed, it's, it's a nightmare to try and make uh, data available that doesn't do anything other than pit one school against another. Take, I mean, take the, the principalship. If we had five principals, or just take two, if we had the high school principal with 700 plus students <coughs> and Newbury Elementary principal with you know, roughly 400 students, take that same scenario, say they're both making $100,000, what was the difference? I mean, it's, it's $250 per pupil, per pupil versus 143. Just on its face value, it's the same product sitting there. It's the same principal, the same school. So it's, we'll just say it's going to be really interesting. Is that the message we got from that webinar? Yeah. Um, and, so, and so also that's coming out in December, um, but it will have fiscal 17 data because fiscal 18 isn't finalized yet. And then in the spring, March, um, they said they would be updating that with fiscal 18 data. So um, when that happens and we see it, no one's seen it yet. So when we see that the first time, um, we will do our best to start answering questions that will unlikely or will likely arise. Um, Annual report won't say a lot to, uh, other than to tell you, you have a copy. Um, I actually mailed a personal note, started with a handwritten note, and then realized that no one can read my writing. So <laughs> typed a note and signed and wrote a note to uh, each of the boards of selectmen. Um, I did hear from Wilma uh, in Salisbury today, um, who is in a great mood and reading it and enjoying it, but she did point out that there's an error. So after um, ad nauseum <laughs> drafts and um, and what do you call the one, the proofs, and right even from the printer, the table on page three that lists uh, the regional district enrollment by grade by school, when the final version happened, they had to shrink that table and it hid a couple numbers. So it looks like uh, second grade at NES Pine Grove and Salisbury is five, five, and six. <laughs> it's missing the 53, 54, 62. Um, so the online version, which is where the majority of folks are going to read this, um, is fixed. It was fixed within about a half an hour of us being aware of that. Uh, so my apologies for uh, the 777th reading of that didn't catch. Um, also to note in the newspaper today, if anyone read the newspaper, they, <coughs> so my quote about the 572 pages, there'll be a correction in tomorrow's paper <laughs> because apparently the humor did not come across in the discussion with Jim. Jim is usually very good. It was a discussion about many things. But when I said, you know, the first draft was like 572 pages and we got it down to 20, um, he took that as fact. So it is corrected online. It will be written as an actual correction in the newspaper tomorrow. Um, so if, if there is feedback, and I've said this, I've heard from several folks, heard from a lot of parents, uh, some who are not parents, who have reached out and said, this is great, good information, I never knew this. Um, so certainly it, um, it's doing the job. Um, I think it will only get better with age. Um, and I, I, I'm now, it's gonna happen that we're gonna get sponsorships so that this actual document can get into every mailbox across the district. Because um, I think there's, there's there are people who would very much like to see their logo on the back of something like that. And it's not a matter of trading a donation that could be useful in a classroom for a donation like this. This folks would really like to give money to this type of uh, project. So um, that's the goal for next year. And I also want to thank um, Nikki Sumner and the, the gang at uh, Minuteman Press because they donated the glossy paper for the printed copies. Um, the community resource liaison, I'm not going to read all the bullets, but you have the copy in front of you in regards to what um, Julie Romano has done in her six weeks, right? Um, if this is what the first six weeks look like, um, I think that was a very wise investment. But just to say, she has, she has focused on uh, the work with the senior centers, um, keying in on a couple um, 
of the, the assets that were noted in the, in the youth survey. Um, we're talking about everything from um, pen pals to had a crew here. I think Newbury Council on Aging had another big event that day, um, but brought both a, um, a rally and a Salisbury contingent to the Our Town play, um, invited them back <laughs> for the spring show, you know, promoted the, the holiday tea, um, but has also been getting out to birthday parties at the counseling on, counselings on aging and connecting them with the schools. So um, it's, I'm very excited and, and it will go beyond just connecting the senior citizens with our, our schools, um, but I think it's, a, it's been a great start. So again, shy of going through the entire uh, listing or the entire paper and listing all of the items that uh, she has worked on. Um, I will just say, are there, is there anything specific that was listed that anyone has questions about? The Snow Angels is another one she's very excited about getting folks to community service to get to Senior Citizens House and, and uh, shovel them out. Um, uh, the next item is the MIAA changes to level classification in summary. Most, most sports, when there's enough uh, student enrollment, we have a freshman, we have a JV, and we have a varsity club. Um, in any school where the, the population is shrinking, um, as Triton is, um, we've often had a hard time fielding a freshman team. We also need a place where kids who may not be ready for JV can play, and they're not quite JV, but they're not a freshman. Um, so the, the KPN League has determined and agreed that there'll be a new classification. So it's JV1, JV2, and varsity. So obviously varsity remains uh, that top competitive team. Uh, JV1 is formerly the JV team, and that would be freshmen through juniors. Um, seniors are required to play in a varsity team. Um, and then JV2 used to be called the freshman team, but this would allow a sophomore, per se, who wasn't ready to play at that next level um, to still remain on that team and don't have to be listed as a freshman. So um, it's a positive change. It is, that is a determination made by the athletic directors. Um, so that went into place, uh, was voted by the uh, Cal ADs, and it will be in place for the spring of 19. Yes. Quick question. So we sometimes have eighth graders that play up. Does yep. that mean they would automatically be on the JV2, or would it be depending upon their ability in the sport? JV2, yeah, I always go backwards. Um, they, they can wave up depending on the sport, but generally mm -hmm. the default is that an eighth grade, would the waiver would be for the JV2 team now. Yes, mm -hmm. that is correct. All right. Um, High school principal search, just to note that that is underway. Um, the ad went in the newspaper, the little picture of the ad in the paper. Um, there's definitely interest. I am not accepting applications through school spring. Um, online platforms, you really don't get a sense of the candidate. Uh, so I'm asking for a traditional packet, the letter, the recommendations, the letter of intent, um, licensure, and, and what have you. So. Um, it's amazing what you can learn from a uh, from an application packet that isn't just a click the button spits a bunch of print or prints a bunch of uh, papers. Um, Excuse me, Brian. Yeah. Did I hear you correctly? You said School Spring isn't giving you the information that you look for. School Spring. So we post everything. That is our you know obviously. Yeah. Um, so the ad is posted on School Spring. It was in the Globe. It was on Education Week. Um, but it notes there. It's just for information. I'm asking them to submit print materials. But uh, did I hear you say School Spring isn't comprehensive enough for? It's. Um, it's it's electronic, so depending on how people use it, it doesn't give you it doesn't give you it doesn't give you a chance to make it look I guess nice. My question is: it, Is it declining in popularity? School spring. No, I, I would say it's still the go to the, okay. the go to place. Um, I mean, on any a general, a third grade teacher will get 400 applications, um, but for a kind of a senior level administrator, like the opportunity to get a little more information. So. Um, so just to confirm, that will close on the 11th. That process will start. Um, Sarah Scruton is the, will chair the faculty and staff committee. She's the uh, vice president of the TRTA. Um, the, um, Beth Demento is the co-chair of the Triton High School Council. She'll uh, chair the, the parent community um, group. And then I'll work with administrators and we'll have the three panels. And it's the same process that I outlined last month. So I will not go through that again. Um, just to note, PEC negotiations are underway. Um, we did connect with Neil Harrington. Um, he was voted. He was very pleased to remember and be reminded that um, <laughs> it's a three-year commitment. So when, when by stat, not, it's code, right? CMS 603, CMI 41. Um, 
by, by that DESE code, that representative is elected. He was elected for the 16, 17 year um, for, uh, it was a TRTA negotiations at that point um, with IAs as well. Um, he did not, the towns generally don't get involved um, with the AFSME groups because they're groups of four. They're, they're not, I would call them not high impact contracts. Um, but uh, he will be involved with the PEC negotiations. We had a first planning meeting uh, in November and then the next, the first session um, with the PNN subcommittee uh, with Dina chairing that is on December 13th. So that is well underway and that will be a topic of discussion as we move through the budget process. Um, an update on the, the, the vaping detectors. Um, to, to, I got a little demonstration. Um, I got a quote. Um, they're not cheap. <laughs> they are apparently incredibly effective. Um, the, the cost would be roughly, what do we say, about 13000 Yeah, and that would be for 10 of them. Um, as I talked through with the rep, um, you need one for uh, roughly every 10 feet. So with the size of our bathrooms, we're probably talking about to be really effective um, for our um, you know, group bathrooms. We're probably talking definitely one, perhaps two. Um, Georgetown implemented them uh, last year, uh, the, or last year into this year, and the response is very good. It's basically a network appliance. It's, it's you put a, a network cable, power over ethernet, and the device, it would look like a, you know, a wireless uh, access point, except it's uh, detecting vapors, it's detecting smoke. <laughs> um, if you mess with it, it'll alarm, um, or if uh, loud noises. It was designed originally as an anti-bullying detector. Um, so that still is, whether it be loud bullying about someone getting slammed into something or obviously a gunshot or something like that, it would detect. And it's instantaneous, so it instantly alerts on an app it sends an email and it sends a text. So those in the presence of the detectors have no idea it went off um, and it instantly alerts anyone. So uh, it's, it's technology that we would be excited to implement, but it's something that we don't have, right. we don't have money sitting around. Um, so uh, that's something that we, we can look to grants um, to implement. Uh, but the response has been, you know, the reports I should say from folks that I've spoken with are, it's, it's, it really works, it actually works. Um, and upwards of 60 to 70% reduction um, in vaping occurrence um, when you have that because, I mean, kids are resilient, they're smart, right? They're gonna go to the places where they're not gonna get in trouble. So if we, if we make sure we're keeping the places within our borders that we can, or our walls that we can control, then, then that's, that's a good thing. So um, more on that, especially if we can find money through grants. Um, Pine Grove is still on track Actually, the cafeteria will open for business with the lunch um, being served after the break. Um, wait till you see it. Holy smokes. Um, it's, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, everyone in the district will be jealous, let's just say that. After Pine Grove living in that uh, 1954 building for a long time, um, it is well deserved, but it is phenomenal. And they will actually have their holiday sing-along before the break, so that Friday afternoon at two o'clock, um, the contractors agreed that it will absolutely have it ready, cleaned, and ready to go. So Friday before break at 2 p.m., the whole school will be in there in that all-purpose room. So it'll be, it'll be a good afternoon. Um, the Bright program, I will keep this very brief, um, Bridging Resilient Youth in Transition. Uh, this was a uh, gentleman that created it in Brookline. Um, this is a program we've been talking about for a while. I had, I had reported to you a while back. Um, the, the key to this program is it's a, it's a temporary program. This is not about um, developing a, a program where a specific need, uh, autism spectrum disorder program, where a student we know is gonna remain in that program. This is a, a, <coughs> the, the stop along the way. Um, you'll be hearing more information about this through our budget presentations from Dave. Um, we, I'm excited because of the fact that we have a program at the high school, the TALC program uh, for medically fragile students that the students are aging out, which means that funding um, 
would, would go away, but this would be the opportunity that for roughly the same money, we will be able to implement a Bright program, which is something we've been talking about for a long time, and perhaps even longer, we've been talking about adding an additional um, developmental level or grade level um, for the elementary autism program. So that ASD program, we're gonna be talking about putting in, it's currently segmented K to pre-K to, um, or K to six, We'd be breaking that up into to smaller grade chunks, K1, 2, 3, or what, whatever the needs are. Um, but we can do that for, for the same money we're spending now because of the TALC program going away. But um, this program is, is targeting students who are they're school avoidant for whatever reason. Um, it could be a student who it starts as a concussion and it turns into can't get out of the house and then it's anxiety prone and then they're hot, I mean, straight to being hospitalized. Um, so it's generally students who are struggling with mental health. Um, but I was just listening to some report and the latest research on concussions is that don't stay home in the dark, not doing anything, actually limit it if, you're, if you have a headache respond to that but other than that get back into the action get back not this the athletics action that sounds bad <laughs> get back into school action um and and this will be that type of program where rather than saying if a doctor is saying they need to be in school but the, the student is saying they can't well we have a a, a a stop along the way the program would be in uh we're talking about the lower um back half of the middle school there's a space available there's a separate entrance on the side um, so this it would be funded or the funding would provide uh, an educator and it would provide a licensed mental health professional in whatever capacity we decide makes the most sense so a lot more to come in the future but um, we're moving down the path pretty quickly um, the the um, there's been there's a lot of funding wrapped around this program um, from from folks who want to see it happen. So, you know, it's, there's not a lot of commitment of funds, but it's something that when, when we're ready to go, we have to have the staffing available. So um, Megan Ober and Catherine Daw at the high school have done a lot of legwork in planning for this. Um, and then it will be a matter of, um, there'll be some, some political um, mindset changes, because uh, folks see that as, well, if we're able to add staff, why can't we add whatever, an English section. Um, but the reality is, you know, I won't go through the, the numbers specifically, but we're talking the students when we're not able to, to get them the needs or get them the services they need and we can't get them into school, we're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, for the private placements um, that are the result when we can't meet their needs. So this is a really important program. Um, Safe and Drugs Free Schools Grant, $7,500. A little blurb there about what, what we're going to be putting that towards. Continue the work that Kim's been doing with the Wellness Committee uh, and also with um, the assistant principals and the uh, 504 coordinators. And then um, the budget and SIPT update, I don't think there's anything there. Um, nope, there's nothing there that we didn't, we didn't talk about. Um, I think we've already made that determination. It's going to be three to two days and, and we'll <coughs> tweak the process a little bit, but absolutely keep the principals involved. Any questions? Also, can we? No. Do you have one? I do have some questions, just about the personnel report. Oh, oh. fire away. <laughs> so, Brian, on, on page two, you know me in the personnel report. I do. <laughs> on page two, um, in Newbury Elementary, that top person uh, separated on November 8th. And then if you go back to the hires, that person was hired 12 days later for a substitute teacher and or IA. I mean, so I see the November top 8th, I see. Okay, now where am I going? The same, same on the front page, Newbury Elementary. He was hired yep. 12 days later for substitute and or IA. Yes. Um, how were we, in the past, I don't recall substitute teachers being identified on personnel reports. Substitute teachers were always per diem, their own thing and now all of a sudden we're having them mixed into personnel reports and I'm struggling with that. Um, so we can talk about that but I, that's a response to a request you made a couple months ago about any change be added to this report. So we can absolutely tease that out. But, but my question is why are we bringing substitute teachers in because we know from contract negotiations last year with IAs that they have a whole new level of PD and everything else and now it seems that we're bringing so, uh, so a new, hold, on, hold on, we bring a new hire in and we identify him as a sub and or IA, and that just baffles me. No, so it's, so it's a substitute teacher or IA. So that was an IA 
who was no longer able to commit to being a full-time IA and is now a substitute. So he's not here regularly. So all those, there's several people, Ben Schwartz, Mercer again, Guglielmi, put my glasses back on. So if it says substitute teacher and or IA, they could be either or. So that person could come in and sub for a teacher one day, or they could come in and sub for an IA. But they're a substitute. Does that make sense? So we're hiring them, but they, $75 a day if they're an unlicensed teacher, $100 a day if they're a licensed teacher. On that sixth day, they move to $125 if that's the case. If they're an IA, it's $75 a day. So they're coming in just, they're into the bank, right? So by seeing, if you're seeing them on this list, they're going into the pool. So uh, 5.45 when the phone starts ringing for Kim Wright here at the high school, I need three subs, they're coming off of that bank. So this report puts them into that bank of substitutes. So they're strictly substitutes. Strictly. If it says substitute teacher and or IA, that means they can do either of those. We hire them as either or, and they're just a substitute, which means they're only getting the dollar, the 75 bucks a day, the 100 bucks a day, the 125 a day, if they're in our building called in per diem. Okay. But have we in the past identified substitutes as hires? No. Do we need to? Um, we don't, I mean, we can have a separate category. I mean, I, but do we, we need can, to is really the question. So I mean, I, what I'm hoping for, Brian, on personnel is I want to know who's a full-time teacher here, who comes, who yep. goes. Yep. Because, so, I mean, when we go through the budget process and we axed all of these IAs, I want to be clear about who's coming back and who isn't. That's right. all. And I don't think subs need to be part of our personnel report. I just don't. I'm, this, this doesn't have to exist. Right? This, this whole piece of paper, this is a, this is a, or a creation to satisfy questions that have been asked but by you and by others in the past. I think, so, I, I think personnel reports are very important yeah. for full-time people. So okay. then what but we not can the do, substitutes. Yep. So what we can do is, I think it's important if we're hiring someone that you're made aware so we can keep a separate list of folks. Or if you don't want to know about that, that's fine. Hire them for subs? To be on our sub list? Yeah. Because they'd be working in the school. Right, because they're, they're in your employ as a committee member. Right. Doesn't mean they're going to, I mean, they might only work one day and make $75 and never show up again. Or they might be here every day for, you know, $125 a day, and they're that sub that we love and we have in every day because we need them. So, so I think it's important because you might see a substitute. You might go into a school and see a person. And like, I keep seeing that person. It says substitute. Well, you could go back and find them on the report because they were added into the bank. But we, but I do, I mean, it does make sense to keep, the, categorize them separately. So we could do, you know, kind of, you know, um, new hires, resignations, and then new appointments as substitutes. We can easily categorize that separately. And then it's just less confusing. And then also to note, last month you asked, how do you know, I forget the, how you, how do you know if it's a brand new position or someone filling an old? So we added... Um, right at the top where it says bold new hires appointments, names in bold with an asterisk, that's a, that's a brand new position. So you can see there's no bold asterisks here, so there's no new positions this month. Thank you. That makes sense? It does. All right. Patty's taking good notes, to keep me honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you, you guys no, no, laugh no. and you giggle, but, you know. No. Not, to bela not to belabor. The person here listening and wanting to know about our staffing. Absolutely. And yeah. we've got declining enrollments, and when we cut people, I want to be able to say we have cut them. Yeah, Absolutely. And know that they have. Yeah. 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 So, I, I mean, I Absolutely. think the important thing is the report is for us, so we just need to kind of dictate how, yeah. you know, because we're its primary, primary uh, customers, if you were, uh, its primary consumers. Right. It is public, but right. it's really for us, so let's ask for it the way we want to see it. And yes, this can change however you, however you would all like. Deb has a way she'd I, like to see sure. it. <laughs> well, I don't mean to belabor the substitute thing. I understand why it was confusing because it was com somewhat confusing to me too, but I I'm just, we, if you look at any building, you can find a list of all of the teachers, all of the people who work there, right, in the building. We don't have, we don't have a, access to a list of subs for the district, do we? I'm saying that it's just different. Why? We, we can find teachers anywhere. I can go and I can look up all the teachers that teach third grade in this school or second grade in that school, but there's no place that we go to look up a list of subs that have been provisionally hired by the district. So I just find that it, it's like, it seems like it's a double standard, if you will, to 
is there any place that we have a list of everybody who's been provisionally hired or approved to be a substitute? I mean, in our ASOP system where they're coded as a, an available sub. The committee's not given that information. Right. I'm, say, I'm, I'm not sure. Are you asking you would like to see that list? No, I'm just. You're saying uh, it's irrelevant information. I'm sort of, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So is it the will of the committee to see these individuals on a separate list as part of the same document? Or is it the will of the committee to see these totally off the list? I agree with the senior committee member from Salisbury <laughs> that we don't, don't need to know about the subs, okay? They're a separate line item. I just want to know about permanent hires and separations. So we, we don't want substitutes on here? I don't. Any objection to taking substitutes off of this list? Paul? That's one. On. Go for it, Paul. Grab a mic. Here. Great. And then I have two. Almost there. <laughs> <laughs> they are people who come and go into Can our buildings. Can you building. pull the mic just Sorry, a little they, closer? They Thank are you. people who come and go into our buildings um, and are in charge of our children. So if we're going to be looking at who's, who's being added to the lists, there's, of course, the financial piece of it, but also just the who are the people. Mm -hmm. We don't. We, we don't. But maybe it That's would be true. nice to be something. I to, guess it to should just go one way or the other. Either. Yeah. But maybe it would be something that would be nice to have in general. Dina. I agree with Paul. Which one? Not Mr. Lee's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, junior the junior member from Newberry. The junior member like from Newberry. I like this. Freshman <laughs> member from Newberry. Um, no, I, I agree with you, Paul. And I, I think that if we do as, as you proposed, um, and split them out, that makes sense to me. But I do feel responsible for people who come into this building that are in our employ. Maureen? I was just gonna say I agree with Tina, I agree with Paul. I think that, you know, they're, they are in our building, they're seeing our children, and um, they're on the payroll. So we're responsible. So are there any objections to having them on the same document, but on a separate, in a, listed separately? All right. We'll do new hires appointments. Will of the committee. Resignations. Additional subs. Right. Uh, I think, I'm sub sorry, hires. I didn't. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I, I just think it should, they should be treated the same as the other people, whatever it is we decide to do. Because again, I said, I can go to any school in the district, any building, and find out who's teaching in that building. But I can't find out the same thing for substitutes. So I'm just saying, this should be a published substitute teacher list in the same way that there is a published classroom teacher list. But there, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people that appear on this report. Um, coaches, kids club workers, um, explorations presenters. Are oh, there some? Some I can just look at right here. Um, after school math team coach, um, cafeteria worker. So there are a lot of people who appear on this report who are not on a list listed on a website. We list the basics, right? If you're going to have a first grade teacher, special education teacher, the, the students or the people, the people who are going to be working directly with your students. Again, I don't want to belabor the fact, but I just, it just seems to me that there's nowhere where the substitute teachers' names are listed. Nowhere for us to see. But there is for every other thing that you mentioned. Not, I mean, the coaches aren't listed in a place. Like you can look it up on the website. You yeah, can, yeah, yeah, I can go look up the coaches on the website. Kids Club, I guess I'm thinking of one central right. staff <clears throat> roster. But. I, I think the substitute list, though, could be a hard list to publish because you do get subs that sub once or twice a year, maybe. I mean, I used to sub, personally. I'm probably still on that list. <laughs> so... You're inactive. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying it could be a difficult list to compile because I think there are substitutes that are here all the time and there are substitutes that are here once in a, once in a while. <laughs> Use a mic, please. And if it's an ASOP. If they're using an ASOP system, and every substitute they have an ASOP is listed there, one got it real fast. Mm -hmm. It's just a question of where should it be, because uh, it doesn't seem something that you'd want to make a list on the website. Here are all of our substitutes. That would be complicated. Mm -hmm. 
Well, there's also experiences quite recently where a hire, you know, you see the person's name here, they're a new substitute, they come in once and not by their choice, they're never coming back. So, I mean, we publish a list and all of a sudden people see a name and I can't believe they're still in the building. And so I'm a little nervous about publishing that list. That's data that we could every once in a while do an export out of ASOP and show you the active subs. Um, but I think just by putting it on this list as a separate, you're going to see all the subs that come through. Um, but not the ones that are already here. But not the correct. Yeah. Well, we as a committee could get a one-time list, yeah, of, list of that. may not be completely up to date, as, as Maureen said. Maureen may be still on that list. I hope not. Is your phone <laughs> ring at 530 in the morning? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we did try to do some cleanup last spring of that list. Uh, well, I was gonna, uh, up to last year, I was getting notifications of vacancies so that were needed. So. Okay. We did, we did an extensive cleanup in the spring, so I'm hoping you were mo removed at that time. I think I was. But you never know. Um, so yeah, I mean, we could certainly get you a list. I'd rather not publish it on the website, but I can certainly get you that list through ASOP. That's easy enough. So can I make a, oh, sorry, Jim. Jim, can you use your mic, please? <laughs> no, can you just use your mic, please? Okay. <clears throat> Once you construct a list, though, it's public knowledge. Oh, yes, yeah. but it won't be, it, it will be a snapshot of that moment in time. I just, I just go back to the question, I don't know. So, what is the, the point? Is so everybody knows who every sub is? I mean, because if, if a sub's there once, I, I don't know what the value of that is. I would say if we're going to produce the list of the past, that's a one time, we give you a list of everyone that's in the system, and then they're just on this list like any other hire, but just note it as a sub. We can note them in line like they are now, or we can pull them out. That's, that's easy. That's just how we list them. But, um, I think the maintaining a separate list and keeping a separate list updated, publishing on the website, is not something I would, I would feel comfortable doing. Yeah, I agree. So, do we want a one-time list? Preference? Nobody. Okay. So, I, oh yes. I think Sorry. that if we're going to do this, do it right. We get the list. We move forward from there. Okay. Or if nobody else wants to see it, I would like to just. Out of curiosity, I'd be curious as to how many we have. So I was, yeah, I would suggest you can request that as okay. something that the administration could funnel. Yeah, I was going to say if we're going to produce it, we're going to produce it for everyone, right. not just exactly. one of you. Right. So. And then moving forward, this list, but separated substitutes versus other positions. <coughs> yes. 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 Being a lot of yeses. Mm -hmm. Thank. Or an I don't care. I say out of all the items in my report, that is not, <laughs> that is not the one I thought we were getting stuck on. Okay. Can I mention one thing? I did look at Paul. <laughs> yes. Oh. They didn't list who was present, so they technically aren't minutes. Oh. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and I was also going to ask, um, there was an attachment for the high school one, but there's no attachment. So. Hmm. It's just the council membership, and it, it, it would be nice to see who's on yep, the council. Absolutely. So. We can get that for you. Can I get a motion to receive and file the report of the superintendent of schools, please? So moved. <laughs> Second. Thank you. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? All right. Moving along. I totally lost where we were. All right. Um, Item 10, general action items. Moving on to the DCC meeting follow-up. Um, we The minutes from the November 15th DCC meeting are included in the packet. So this is new for us. Um, after a lot of conversation, um, the decision was made for the school committee to post the DCC meetings as a school committee meeting, though the towns are continuing to just essentially piggyback and send a couple of members, so they're not going to post it as official meetings for their boards of selectmen and um, fi finance committee members and administrators. Um, as part of us posting it officially, we have to now approve the minutes from those meetings. So this is the first time that we're going to be doing that. It's part of open meeting law. I see the quizzical look over there. Um, <coughs> So first, can I get a motion to receive 
uh, to approve the minutes from the November 15th, 2018 District Communications Committee meeting, please. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Any discussion? It should be noted as oh, minutes sorry. then, not notes. Oh, yes, you're right. At that moment in time, they went in as notes because they were notes. Right. <laughs> now they just magically <laughs> turned into minutes. Right. Yeah. All right. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. So, yeah, I was just going to go on from there. So you have a copy of the um, the now officially minutes uh, that are included in here. Um, I know a number of people were able to attend. We had a fairly good attendance at this one. Um, you've got a summary of what went on in there. I n unfortunately, it wasn't attached, it looks like. Oh, probably because it was notes at the time. But the, um, the annex um, was included in the DCC agenda, which you would have all received, that summarized the last meeting of uh, the three chairs, <coughs> the board of selectmen, me, and Brian. Um, so that was in there. So I'll open that up for any questions on that, because I knew there, were, there was discussion or comments on that at our last school committee meeting. What, can you repeat that, Narissa? I'm talking yeah, there was a student. yeah, there was a dis there was a question at the last thing about are, are we going to talk about the the chairs meeting and the DCC meeting? And I said, well, I was going to talk about it after it was after we'd had the DCC meeting, which we've now had. So I didn't know if there was additional questions that ar had arisen out of that that we just didn't handle last time or what the situation was. No, I think I was the one that raised the the question that I if there are are notes or okay. minutes being taken yep. at those meetings those should be included. included okay but i didn't i didn't see those at all were those did you say those were distributed there was an annex in here but it, yes it, so it came to you with the dcc agenda it did not get included with this i think because these were notes at the time instead of minutes and now that they're officially minutes the annexes will come along with it as they the yeah it was the post in the posted oh, agenda oh. So um, just as a follow-up on this real quick, um, one of the items that was discussed was the um, local health regulations for vaping. And I am happy to announce that Salisbury passed their local regulation last night. They will be effective <laughs> on December 28th. So thank you to um, all our folks in Salisbury that worked on that. Um, on Monday night, the Rowley Board of Selectmen um, get, sent a letter, voted to send a letter of support to the Board of Health, which is meeting next Monday, um, in support of a similar regulation. I've already confirmed that the Board of Health has that on their agenda for next Monday. Um, they are also aiming for an active date of December 28th if that is approved, so that would um, enforce that for Rowley. And I um, talked to Alicia today via email. She checked in with their health agent in Newbury. They do not currently have any um, facilities, any, any businesses that are um, distributing those types of products in Newbury, and she, they don't have any on the horizon. So um, it's pretty much a, a non-issue at this point for for Newbury, so I think that's good news. I mean, would they have to enact that, though? Even though there are no, she said they. I mean, they could enact it if they if they wanted to, and that would protect us right. moving forward. Um, but given that our greatest period of danger, I think, in this is over the next like right, six right. to eight months, and they don't have anything on the horizon, I, I think we're pretty clear. So I feel like it would be putting them through cycles so, right to exactly. it's really three years right because it's it is who turns someone turns 18 mm -hmm. the day before january 1st of 19 they then have three years until they turn 21 right by that they're still legal without right. this local mm -hmm. so I, I, things don't happen that quickly in <laughs> the respect to your so i think six to eight months three years i think they're good yes yeah All right. my, my six to eight months was uh in reference to most of our 18 year olds that are on this campus ha being going right. to yep. graduate yep. in that's true yes yep. the end of the school year siblings. siblings there are always siblings yep absolutely um so there was that and um the Next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, January 31st, 2019. It's at 6.30 p.m. I did confirm with Newbury that they will be having it at um, their town hall on, in the meeting room on the second floor. So that's where it will be held. I do not know if JR will be chairing, if that's your question. No, that's I haven't heard back on that. Question. Yes, okay. Um, my question is, so given that this is now our responsibility to approve the minutes, mm -hmm. Does, does it mean that we have to have quorum at all DCC meetings? Because sometimes that doesn't happen. I mean, 
if <coughs> rehash this. Yes. So, can, can I weigh in for just a question, a, a second? You want to do an easy question? Well, <laughs> <laughs> will we think about the hard one? <laughs> on, on, on page two of, of the the minutes, it says Brian noted that he spoke with Triton's attorney, who doesn't think the DCC meetings meet the requirements of a public body. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering how we got from that point to minutes to approving them. Yeah, it's because um, even though the DCC is an official public body, we as the school committee, we as the school committee are there and often have a quorum. So to cover ourselves in event of deliberation, which is often part of the discussion there, um, we we are posting it. Yeah. So if if. Because if five of you show up anywhere and talk about committee business, you're doing committee business. So it's a belt and suspenders approach. So I think it's safe to say that at the DCC, you hope to do some committee business. Um, so it was, yeah, it ranged, started with, it's really not even a public body, which is where we landed before. We were mm -hmm. taking notes um, to if there's going to be any decisions made there, you're far better off to have one group post it. And then the selectmen and, and finance committees can decide what they want to do. If there's a, a timely issue, I mean, I'm guessing on the January 31st, we're in the throes of budget. It's going to be a, a focused meeting. They might decide to, to post that and, and you know, develop their own minutes and have it be a public meeting as well. What we were hoping to do was post it, um, the question to our attorney, and then the, the IG's office was, can we post it as a collaborative district-wide meeting and then it that takes the place of the selectmen's posting the fincom's posting and the school committee and that was a definitive no um and then it kind of worked its way back to it's it's not not necessarily a public body but because five or more of you are there treat it as one so that goes back to my so <laughs> so then if you post it um then you technically, if five of you aren't there, you can't do any committee business. So but as long as you're not taking any votes. But we aren't voting anyway. They don't take True. votes, no. though. And it, the, the regional agreement is truly between the three towns. W with us, but we are a smaller, smaller piece of that. But what does the regional agreement have to do with it? That's re really what the DCC is all about. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why they said it was not a true public body was because it's it's um, initiated by that document. So, just focused on issues with the regional agreement, right? Yep. Yeah, I mean, I'm. So why are we changing these to minutes then? Why I may, I may have suggested by the IG that we do to cover ourselves. Then I go back to my question about <laughs> quorum. <laughs> so I know you can hold, an, hold a meeting without having a quorum there, although they don't recommend it, and you can't take a vote. But, but at that how point, do we I vote on a minute, right? So that, anyway. But even regardless of whether that happens or not, I think you'd still have to produce minutes of that meeting. Yeah, anyone can produce or approve minutes. All nine of you could vote on the minutes if. I can vote to approve minutes because I trust that they are an accurate representation of what happened. Right. Okay. So that's where we're sitting now. And to just clarify a statement that Brian made earlier, um, one of the decisions that was made at a prior meeting, I can't even remember which one it was at this point, um, was that Sandy would actually be taking minutes for the DCCs, so it wouldn't be a situation if the... Um, if the boards of Slackman or the fin finance committees decided to post it, they would actually use Sandy's minutes. That was a, a conversation that we had had before. We're paying her for that anyway, so. Um, and she was willing. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> Any other questions on that before we go on? <laughs> it's the little things in this agenda, man. <laughs> I didn't see these coming. Um, <laughs> item 11, subcommittee reports and action items. And Linda, policy and advocacy is up first. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with the um, school committee goal number two that we have. Absolutely. Which is the policy and advocacy subcommittee will present an overview to the full committee by December 2018, and the plan shall be implemented during spring of 2019. Now, just bear with me. This was uh, a lot of note-taking 
coming up with ideas. So these are just ideas that uh, we came up with. In the logistics of these ideas, we have to work out. So, and that would be how we would implement it in spring. So part of why we were tasked with this was to build awareness and understanding of the school community's role in our continued commitment to the district and towns and trying to bring Triton to our towns. Um, to make the school committee more accessible to the entire community it serves, increasing communication and transparency. And what we spoke about was having videos or written segments about did little segments of did you know, like uh, what is the open meeting law? A lot of people don't understand why we can't do certain things. So having a video explaining what the open meeting law is is one of the ideas we had. And what are each of the subcommittees for? So we have these subcommittees, and I th don't think a lot of people understand what we do in these subcommittees. So having either a video segment or a written segment of what we do in our subcommittees um, and the current initi initiatives that we are working on. Um, like we had a conversation with Julie who took what we suggested and holy cow, she <laughs> went on with it. It's amazing what she um, snowballed into having with just a few little meetings that we had and emails going back and forth that she's really going to be an asset to our school committee. Um, we have the student council report. We should have that be put on. And all of this, what I'm saying is having these accessible is on the Triton webpage, just having little weekly blurbs of something, whether it be the video of what our school council so that Everybody understands what our students are talking about, what their concerns are in the school. And then, like even with the dress code, being able to come back with a, another blurb saying this was the result of what they discussed or something like that. Um, video introductions of the school committee, where they live, how long they've been on the school committee, why they joined the school committee, and something they love about Triton. Um, and also having a school committee joined with a, one of our selectmen and showing how we're partnership and being one community. Um, highlight a student of the month or a Triton volunteer of the month, highlighting a teacher each month, you know, what work they're doing so that people can see how hard our teachers are working. Uh, this was something that I had discussed with Brian, um, that developing a shadow day for the elementary, for some of the elementary kids to come up to the middle school and spend the day, and then having every single one of our eighth grade students sit in on one high school class. Um, we have our students that go to Whittier, every single eighth grader goes to Whittier. Um, we should be doing something like that for our students students coming to Triton and having them sit in a, now that the um, schedules are aligned, you could have a math, have them go s sit in a math class or English class or something that they're interested in, the robotics class that they might be interested in. And some of that stuff might make one of our students say, you know what, I don't want to go to St. John's Prep, I want to come to Triton, you know. Um, then we, I wanted to expand this to not just, uh, you know, the school committee members, but the curriculum I had spoken to Kim about, you know, having a discussion of our new math program, our new science program, and any upcoming new initiatives that are going to be made, and explain why it's important that we're updating. People look at our budget and say, what are you implementing a new science program for? They don't understand that we have to because of the curriculum. So that would be something good for uh, Kim to put something out. Um, to dis discuss the importance of half days, the professional development. I hear all the time of parents being upset about all the half days we have. It would be nice to have something 
being discussed about why it's important that we have professional development. Um, to also have a list and describe what our clubs and organizations are. Um, showcase what our arts, music, and drama are, which I know we're doing a lot of that now. Um, introduce what our guidance department does in Naviance. Everybody hears about Naviance, but they might not understand what it means, having a little video of that type of thing. And then also, I have in here technology. What are we using our Chromebooks for? And explain why technology in our schools is important. You know, talk about the cybersecurity, talk about school security, what we're doing in those things. So, what my idea is, and I know there's a lot of stuff in here that a lot of this stuff, once we get it to where we want it to be, can be a yearly thing. Like, we have this whole segment, and it's just, okay, let's talk about this this week, let's talk about this, whatever we want to talk about. So the logistics that I was talking about is trying to figure out who can be an admin. Is everything going through Brian and Keddy? Is everything? So can Kim just, oh, I decided to put this on. This would be great. You know, I, so that's the logistics part of what I have to get worked out for to bring it to the spring to have that uh, thought. So it's just a lot of thoughts. Um, I also had talked to Narissa about possibly having uh, one of the team drives so that if any of you had an idea, we can throw that in there as part of. I'm gonna put this in there and you guys can just add it to wherever you want and when we're looking at it, we can decide how we're gonna do it, who's gonna do it, stuff like that. So that's, Paul, I don't know if you have anything else. That, Tina wasn't able to make it tonight. Her and I spent a lot of time with this, so. Um, I don't know if you have anything. I think that covers everything that yeah. about. <laughs> so. so there's just uh, been a lot of back and forth, and I think it's exciting to see all the things that we can do. And these are just the things that we thought about, you know, of what parents might be talking about. So if anybody has any discussion on that. Feedback for Linda? Maureen? I just have one thing to say. I, I agree. I hear a lot of parents say you know, on professional development days, you know, wow, another half day. So I think it would be great to find ways to communicate to parents what's taking place on those days. And, you know, one th thought I had is every time we have those half days, there's emails that go out to parents saying, you know, reminder, it's a half day. You know, you could put something in that email that just says it's professional development. Here's a snapshot. You know, your teachers will be participating in these types of workshops. And it, it just, it's a quick way to notify parents, like, it's just not an afternoon off for our teachers. They are working. So, just thought. Can I just add? Yeah. Linda, I think if you put that list out on a team drive, that's great because listening to all these things that you're <laughs> listing off, I'm my wheels are already turning. <laughs> um, one thing I will say is um, superintendent and I had a conversation last year because a parent had raised this too about um, just as you said, the, the kids go to, to Whittier. So why are we not selling Triton to Triton? And I think the idea of getting the kids to be able to go to the high school and, and the elementary shadowing the middle school fabulous idea and, and I think that that's one that I really want to I'll do whatever I can to make that happen <laughs> because I think that's incredible I think there's also another component of getting parents in here to see what actually happens in these buildings I know that used to hear from parents all the time beginning at the middle school that well your your kids don't want you here in school I don't quite buy that you know I just <laughs> You know, you don't have to be volunteering, but if you're in there to see a program of some sort, that's, that's immense value, I think. So I'm curious. I'd love to see that list. Any other comments? I'll just add one. One of the things that when Linda and I, she was briefing me because I didn't get to that P&A meeting um, just so that I knew what she was going to talk about tonight um, before this meeting. And one of the things that I had mentioned to her as well was um, that we'll be able to publicize events. And I know it's been a long time committee discussion about being able to hold like evening forums and things like that. Um, Brian and I had talked over the last couple of days as this was kind of coming up about hopefully getting Jeff Prady here in April um, to finally have a session like that. I know Kim's 
spent most of her day with him today, I understand. <laughs> Buddies, excellent. She said no problem, she can get him here. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Call him. No. Um, so we look forward to being able to do things like that too, where we can um, kind of publicize some of these events. You know, the vaping forum that was held last year, it would be nice to be able to have an avenue to be able to, to bring that in. So if we can get in the habit of using social media, using websites, if we get our communities in the habit of tapping social media and websites to be able to learn about um, things that are going on here that they might want to intend or um, just in general learning, um, then that's a, a wonderful thing. So may I suggest the first presentation or forum we have is how to use social media? <laughs> Seriously. That's a good idea. <laughs> Not to use it? That too. <laughs> there's plenty of parents who wouldn't know where to look yeah. for, for some of these things. Sure, the kids would know. but uh, Parents are pretty good on social media. <laughs> Out there. Well, Not I guess, all. yeah. <laughs> at least what I can see. Not where we want them to be then, yes. I guess. Maybe not doing the things we do. All right. <laughs> Any other comments on Linda's plan? All right. Uh, Linda, your actual policy work, yeah. <laughs> if you could. Okay. We have um, sections A through F that we've looked at these in nauseam. And as I look at this, <laughs> as I re-looked at this, <laughs> um, if there's any, because I saw in one policy that there was a strike through some words on it. So I don't know, do we have to amend what we're doing? Oh, gee, she's got her. her uh. <laughs> Count on that. That's, um, do we, I mean, you can amend, you can vote how, and this is a first reading. Right, okay. Um, I mean, I can't edit these. This all comes from Mike. He's got right. the master copy, so I'll just find a way to get that to Mike. <laughs> and, and a lot of those are, are little edits, but I know what you're referring to, Lyndon. There was another one where we say business manager, where we should be really using Michelle's actual title, not mm. just business manager. Mm -hmm. Little things like that, but those are easy enough. Personally, I don't think that requires another vote. Yeah, I, don't, I think if it's semantics, if it's true right. language, um, then I don't, I don't believe it does. And I would say we should be using um, functional titles like school business official, so regardless of what we call her, as far as titles, <laughs> <laughs> um, then it, it fits, you know, so. Okay, so can I ask um, that if you have edits, funnel them into Linda, and if we could get an approval of policy manual sections A through F as a first review and reading for tonight, please. Do I make that? You can make that motion. I'll sure. make the motion. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Did you have a comment? All right, any discussion? All in favor? All right. And the second half of this will be coming in... A few months, right? I, yeah, I, I don't want to answer for Mike. I, I believe because we'll have to get edits back to him. So um, he's retiring. So we'll, I, I don't, does that become Dorothy, I think, Dorothy Presser. So we'll have to kind of pass that torch on. But I mean, I don't, I think at this point, we're not assuming A, A through F comes back next month that you study this entirely. So it may take a little bit of time, but I think we just want to kind of get the, get the wheels in motion so that in the next few months we can, yeah, I would assume that in the, within the next two months yeah. we'd be able to get that back. It's the meaty section, the next yeah. J and H is, or J and I. Or. Anything else from PNA? I am done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Linda. You guys are doing a phenomenal amount of work over there. I mean, it's just huge compared to what you used to do and a policy review on top of it. <laughs> All right, um, moving on to personnel and negotiations. Dina? Superintendent has pretty much already said everything that <coughs> needs to be said. We've started, um, we met in November with our advisors to kind of plan strategy for our ne upcoming negotiations with um, the PEC, and we will be meeting with them on the 13th. All right, excellent, thank you. Um, Finance Subcommittee, Deb? Uh, we had our regular meeting last week, um, just standard monthly reports, and as you may have seen in the minutes, Michelle didn't have anything develop any new developments on the upcoming budget year. Our next meeting is scheduled for December 19th. All right. Uh, and we had no correspondence, I believe. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, because we pulled, the letter was supposed to be in there. The rally letter was supposed to be in there, and we pulled that. All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Oh, Jim's got I have one. A question before. Yes. Um, Brian, today on my way over here tonight, 
Oh, I heard something interesting on the radio. It, uh, it said that it's, it's a shame that schools across the country uh, didn't, or maybe didn't have the opportunity to hear some of the um, comments, some of the, and witness some of the ceremonies for mm -hmm. late President Bush. And I was just wondering, um, in the Triton School District, do you, do you promote that or those type of things that are significant national events? Um, you know, I'm not sure what the availability of video coverage is, but is the opportunity put forth to the teachers that they have a level of comfort? I just, just a curious. Yeah, I would say that I have not had any conversations about, about the ceremonies today yeah, yeah. Um, of uh, number 41. Um, I, I, in the past, yes, there's certainly discussions, um, but I don't, I don't know. My guess is absolutely that occurred yeah. across yeah. the district, absolutely. Um, I would, my guess is at I'm the just, high school level. I'm wondering level. if it's encouraged is what I'm saying because sometimes, you know, as you know, teachers are reluctant and absolutely say, "Darn yeah. it, I wish I, you know." Absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. just a It wasn't encouraged today. I can tell you that. I, I yeah. didn't. I didn't. I was not involved today. But in That's the past, right. there has no, been. Just, it's a good. It's a good point, and I think that if we, you know, people are reluctant when politics are involved. Well, but, I think um, with the civic education, the state is pushing. Yeah. You know, I, I just yeah. think it's a whole dimension for yeah. to youngsters to witness and see history rather than reading about it six absolutely. years later in a book. You yeah. Know? And if it's done consistently, there's no politics, there's no agenda. If it's, you know, regardless of race, creed, color, political agenda, it's everything. So thank you. Yeah, it's good. It's a good point. Can I get a motion to adjourn, please? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Second. All in favor? All right. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. So if you go to team drives, um, school committee, you can either you, I, you can either create a new one or.